Well, the name Kareem Channel should ring a bell for those of you that are regular NBL listeners because she's been our guest previously. And then, of course, we re-ran that conversation as a best of NBL. So for any that remember the name, she's author of the book Beyond the Bolted Door. Uh, there's a sequel now and uh, a second book that's been written called The Road Beyond the Bolted Door. So there's more to the story, and we're going to get into part two of that conversation today on NBL. But let me welcome Kareen Channel back to the conversation. Kareen, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me again. I didn't know there would be another <laughs> another one. Well, you know, that's interesting because um, obviously the first book was powerfully received. We had, I can tell you this, we, you know, we get responses to just about all the interviews we do. Sometimes it's one or two. We had a whole lot more than that. Um, in the neighborhood of at least a dozen responses, which I think personally means that there may be as many as a hundred for every single actual response. Um, so who knows? There might have been a thousand people who said, I want more information. We heard from a bunch of them and said, who is this woman and how do we get a copy of her book? So obviously it was having an impact and I want to talk about that. But um, before we go too far, let's just, can we let the cat out of the bag about the edit on the first interview? Can we talk about that for a minute? Okay, because yeah. there, there, there's a story when we when we talked to Corrine about her book Beyond the Bolted Door, which I hope that she'll recap for us here in a minute. Um, she called us back desperate after the interview. That was a pre-recorded <laughs> interview we did that day for whatever reason, and she said, "Wait, there's something you have to edit out. I'll let you tell the rest of the story." What what was that about? Re refresh my memory. Well, I was telling you how many children I had and how many grandchildren I had. And my son and his wife hadn't announced yet that they were having a baby. <laughs> but when I was telling you how many grandchildren I had, I added their number in. And I was like, yeah, we're waiting for this one. And we're so excited. <laughs> and then after the and I never thought about it. Like I just announced it on the radio. So later in the day, I laid down and I really woke up with a jolt. And I went, oh, my gosh, I got to call him back. I just told everybody that my son is having a baby, and he didn't tell anybody. <laughs> oh. In the end, so, yeah, go ahead. Graciously, well, I was going to say, so graciously you just laughed and you edited it out for me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it, it actually was a simple thing to do. Uh, we removed it from the content of that, that particular conversation, but in the end, apparently your son didn't think it would have been that big a deal. He didn't. But the, you know what? And that actually should just show you, really, that that's what anxiety does to you. It makes little things be very big when, in all actuality, <laughs> they're, they're not. So you were living out some of the, the healing, uh, some of the issues that yeah. still need to be healed in your heart, bottom line. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, this new book's called The Road Beyond the Bolted Door. But mm -hmm. before we get to that, yeah. take us back for a second. Remind us what the first book was about. It was an amazing okay. conversation, and very raw, very real. It dealt with your story. But recap for us what the first book was about. Wow. Um, well, I'd like to first just refer to the cover for anybody that's seen it or can visualize it. It has a very old, ancient door on it um, with a bolt. And I want to talk about what the meaning of that is, because that was the premise really for the whole book. It, uh, by the, the way, it looks door, kind of like a, a dungeon or a castle kind of door, like yeah, very intimidating, it, huge, you know, steel bolt on, on there. And yeah, yeah. My, my son created it. I would just tell him visually what what I saw, what I wanted. And I wanted it to be authentic because it goes with a story in the Bible of a Jewish door. And that's what I was aiming for. Um, it's the story of Princess Tamar, who was King David's daughter. I had never heard the story before until my editor told me that I probably should read it. It's a story of how she had been raped. Um, being a princess and daughter of the king did not even spare her from such a tragedy. Mm -hmm. And I could relate to her because I myself was a victim of sexual abuse as a preteen and as a teenager. I, too, was raped. And I think from reading her story is where I... I got the courage to actually even say that word out loud. It wasn't a word that I could even voice to anybody. Like I literally held the secret for 50 years because I didn't even know how to tell anybody. 
So Tamar then became um, who I was writing the book for. Like I became able to tell my story through her story and she could tell her story through mine. So it turned out being like a tribute to her, to myself and all of the other nameless spaces down through history. I feel like I want my book to be that voice that none of us got to have. And a quote from my first book, I think, just sums it up for me, what my life was like. Silence only breeds more silence. It is a dangerous predator in and of itself, equal only to what is being held in secret. So book one is really my journey of unbolting my own door, you know, shattering the silence and facing the shame and all the consequences of it. Um, I call them unintentional consequences because I had buried it so far down that I didn't realize how much it tainted everything I did, everything I said, decisions I made. Like, I love Jesus. That was not the issue. <laughs> the issue was the hidden trauma so down, you know, deep down. But then at the end of the book, I, you know, I felt like well, I faced my past. Look at me. I just wrote a book, which then that gave me trauma. That was a new trauma. The day I hit send. <laughs> no, the day I hit send and sent it to the publisher, mm-hmm. I had a panic attack. Really? Full on panic attack. How come? And that's when I, because I just told everybody. Hmm. It wasn't like I just decided to tell one person. I decided to tell everybody. So. You could, That's where book two comes in. <laughs> you could actually call that a self-inflicted trauma in one sense. I mean, the idea that... In one, well, yeah. I, th- yeah. I think, I mean, I remember from the conversation that you sensed that the Lord was telling you it was time to bring this story out in the open. So you were yes. doing it in obedience, but you're saying in your flesh as a human being, it was scary oh. to think all of a sudden people would know this oh about God. you when previously mm-hmm. they knew nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's how book two was born, because, you know, people ask me, are you going to write another book? And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Never. Oh, <what? laughs> that, nope, that was everything I had is in those 158 pages. You know, like, no, I'm done, except that I wasn't. <laughs> because then there became that journey of healing. And that's what it is. The road beyond the bolted door, emphasis on the word, you know, the road. Is it's a journey, it's a healing. Right. So this book is about my healing journey, and like maybe um, a survival guide or a map, where I'm just opening my diary to the world and saying, "Look, this is what I felt. This is what I thought. This is how I interpreted things." If you can learn quicker than me, then that would be right. that would be my hope. You know. You know, I want to be super sensitive about how I ask this because I don't want to be. Um, responsible for more trauma as we talk about such a sensitive issue as rape and you said if i heard you correctly that you were raped as a preteen and as a teenager and Mm -hmm. one of the things we know from sexual abuse is that it most often does not happen uh as a result of some total stranger like you know a guy in a ski mask jumping out of a van just grabbing a young girl and abusing her yeah that it's often somebody much closer to home or uh, a trusted teacher or coach or, you know, leader at a summer camp or something like that. It's 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 somebody with, it would, within the circle. And go ahead. Right. No, I was going to say, and it would be much easier, probably. I mean, obviously not always, but to tell if it was a stranger than if it's somebody that you knew. Right. And that makes your story doubly hard. Now, I don't know what you want to reveal or feel free to reveal or... You know, I'll leave that up to you, but obviously your story, I think, deals with the latter scenario as opposed to the first. It wasn't somebody just that you didn't know jumping out of a, a minivan somewhere. It was somebody right. close to home, mm-hmm. which made it a secret you carried, as you said, for over 50 years. Yeah. I don't address it in the book. Like, I've had people that have bought the book, and, and some of my kids and grandkids, and you have to remember, I knew that all these people would read this book. hmm so I didn't name names and places, and I never felt like that was the point. The point was, this happened to me. This is who I became because of that, and this is what I need to do right now. 
Mm-hmm. So I tell people when they're afraid to read it because they think it's going to be something they don't want to know. You know, it's not there. I very conceptual how I write. I think I told you that last time. Sure. I very much write in concept, and if you look on my book cover, there's all kinds of stuff there, very small and hidden that are concepts that are within the book. You know, I one of the reasons people are afraid to tell when something's happened in their life is because they don't think they're going to be believed. On the mm-hmm. other hand, on the other hand, by giving names and dates and times, you maybe increase the possibility that you're going to be believed, but also increase the backlash from those who feel that they're being singled out or accused of rape or whatever the violation okay. might be, no matter what kind of trauma people have faced. So that makes it pretty complicated. And I, I, I don't really know this part of your story, but I wonder if you'd be willing to help us understand, did it matter to you if people believed you or not? Or was it, in other words, was was the prompting to just simply share the truth and let it stand on its own mm-hmm. or to share the truth and know that you were being believed? Did that matter? Well, I was a teenager. So for one thing, I... Mm. There's a thing called grooming. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's where an adult would would groom a child so they would get used to a certain thing happening. And as a child, how do you know that that's good or bad? If nobody's ever told you, you really don't even know. You might have a sixth sense that says, hmm, this doesn't feel right to me, but you really don't know. And I think in those age groups, in those years, I didn't know how to tell anybody. I didn't even know what the word rape was. So not really sure I even... And when I finally did speak up, pretty sure I didn't even use that word. Really? Were you mm-hmm. coerced in such a way that you were told not to tell or that it would be a yeah. bad idea? Okay. So you were yeah. told it was a bad Were you threatened then? Um, I wouldn't say out and out threat, but when somebody's way older than you and they say, you know, you better not tell, then, you know, you, sure. you're a child, you're 12 or... 11, you, okay, right. I guess I won't tell. So you, it was a traumatic experience to write the book and hit the send button, sending the manuscript <laughs> off to the publisher. And I commend you for your courage. I believe God has good things in store for you. But you say that itself was a traumatizing experience, which brought a whole new level of trauma into your life. Um, the new book, The Road Beyond the Bolted Door, kind of picks it up from that point and brings it to the present day. So that's what we're going to look at. we got to take a break, though. So let's do that. Uh, Kareen Channel, spelled C-O-R-I-N-E, Kareen Channel, C-H-A-N-N-E-L-L. I'm sure a lot of people pronounce that Chanel, but either way, it's Kareen Channel. (laughs) And the book is called The Road Beyond the Bolted Door. You can get it at Amazon. It's the follow-up to Beyond the Bolted Door. And uh, it's a fascinating story from a wonderful woman of God who courageously has begun to talk about an experience she had as a child that brought real hurt into her life. And now today we're going to talk about some of the unraveling of that hurt and the healing process that follows. Because I think that Corrine, like many of us, felt if she just told what happened, everything would be okay. Which actually, though, was the first day of the healing process, which is probably still ongoing. Got a lot to talk about here. We'll be back with more of NBL in just a moment. Today's program brought to you by Cornerstone Bookshop. Kareem Channel is our guest. She's been my guest before here on NBL, author of a book called Beyond the Bolted Door. She wrote a sequel to it called The Road Beyond the Bolted Door, and for good reason. Beyond the Bolted Door told the story of her rape as a child, uh, a preteen and as a teen, and the horrendous story of what that trauma did to her, how that impacted her life. But as many people know, the day that a child is rescued in a sex trafficking ring or someone is uh, set free from slavery or bondage, that's day one of the healing process. uh, And it goes on from there. So, Corrine, you described when you wrote the first book that that itself uh, brought trauma because you were scared now that all these people knew your story. How in the world did God take you from that place to say, oh, yeah, well, now you're going to write another one? (laughs) 
How in the world do you get well, to that place? Um, key word probably is God. Right. You know, God doesn't ask you to do something that he hasn't, in my case, very slowly and very carefully prepared me for. Like, he didn't just one day in my life say, oh, today, let's talk about this, and you're going to do this. No, this has been since my husband passed away in 2004, an ongoing healing to Hmm. get all the way to where I am now. A little at a time, because it was buried so deep in the mud, I would have needed an excavator, what's it called, (laughs) excavator, to get to the bottom of it, Mm -hmm. to get to the bottom of the pit. I wanted to share, I think. Um, a few chapter titles, because I think that might actually help more to explain what the book is about. Sure. Okay. Uh, One is called The Trauma of Re-Traumatization. That was something that I had no idea was going to happen, that um, I would feel re-traumatized. I would feel all the pain and the sadness and the, what would you call shame. From those years, that it would literally, because I had suppressed it, it was now like standing at attention, like, oh, here I am. Remember me? Mm-hmm. So that was a very traumatic experience. This chapter, um, probably my favorite chapter in the book, favorite's probably not the right word, but it's called We Don't Talk About the Big Bad Wolf. Hmm. And I took it from the story of Little Red Riding Hood. And I researched all about the predator nature of wolves while exposing the nature of human predators, because unfortunately, there are human predators. And that was a big deal for me to have to, to have to recognize that and acknowledge it. Because you wonder, as somebody that's abused, how did you, how did you let this happen? Or did I do something? Or did I cause this? Or was it my fault? And those are all things that send you spiraling into silence. You have so many questions that nobody really can answer. Sure. And another one is called Learning to Crush My Fears. And I compare fears and uh, to spiders. Did you know by, you know, that there's always a spider within seven inches of you at all times? Like right now there's a spider somewhere by you. (laughs) (laughs) I hate spiders. (laughs) <laughs> now, where did you get this fact from? I looked it up. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's an actual thing. There's always a spider about seven inches from you. And I thought, I hate them. I live in the country, so now I went on this, like, I called it like a spider alert, like looking everywhere for spiders. But God used that to show me this is what I wasn't prepared for on the journey was triggers. So spiders. Triggers, same thing. All the little fears. Some of them are never going to go away. I can still walk into a grocery store and they'll play the song that was me and my husband's song in the 70s. That's going to happen. There's always going to be something that takes you back to somewhere. And with trauma, that's where it's going to take you. Mm -hmm. So I've learned how to crush my fears. Some of them I have to learn to live with. They're always going to be there and some of them I crush. And one spider in particular I killed after it was already dead. So, you know, there's that. (laughs) But I've learned that I'm the bigger force in the room now. And then lastly, this other chapter I wanted to mention is the unbroken grow weary of the broken. Let me say that again because this was a biggie. The unbroken grow weary of the broken. And what does that mean? That you're going to get ghosted (laughs) by people when you share a story like this because people can't handle it and it's not a flaw on their part you know it's not something you can get mad at but i lost so many people like it's just like they fell off the planet and then your imagination goes all kinds of places like oh no are they judging me do they hate me did i offend them but i've learned that the ones who need to hear your story will find you, and really, that's your audience. My story isn't for everybody. It's not on Amazon to make a million bucks and for everybody to buy it. It's for somebody who needs to read it. You're talking like a healthy person, Corrine. Like, where where did you get that from? Oh, I 
because because that's some oh. that's that's a well thought out and powerful statement you just made. Well, I mean, I can probably compare it to um, I had knee surgery a few years ago, and because my knees were so bad, mm-hmm. and I got new ones, and I didn't just get up and run a marathon. So I don't know why I thought after I published the book that I was going to be like, look at me, I'm healed and I feel great and I can tell the world. It takes time. Healing takes time. And it's a journey. And it's a hard journey. And I think that's what I'm trying to say in this book. I'm going to tell you the truth. You decide to tell your story. There's a lot you need to know because it's hard. But I love that saying, you can do hard things. I've said that to myself a million times. You can do hard things. We can. God wired us. He gave us his grace and his mercy and his gentleness. Mm -hmm. Like, that's been a big deal for me. Like, just now see God like this gentle father figure that isn't out to get me. It's been life-changing. Yeah, so if you hear healing, it's because there is healing. Yeah, and let me add something to that real quick. Um, God gives us grace. He gives us mercy you know, his compassion, those kinds of things. And, and they're, you could almost view them like commodities, like, well, now I've got this and I got that. And, but, you know, in, is it Ephesians 4.13 or Philippians 4.13? I'm having a brain freeze. I think it's Philippians. Uh, you know, I can, do, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, through Christ. Mm-hmm. So the reality is that, that he gives us his presence as well. He gives us himself. And, yep. you know, we're told in the Word that... Um, that we're to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known to God, not to our best friend per se, not to our Facebook followers, but to God. And if you keep reading down in that passage, another five or six verses later, it says, and the God of peace, after it says, you know, whatever's right, whatever's true, whatever's lovely, think on these things. Yep. It says, and the God of peace will be with you. So really what I, what I take out of that is that God isn't saying, hey, I'm going to send you peace It's going to show up like an Amazon package on your doorstep. He's saying, I'm bringing you peace. I am peace. I'm your peace. I'm I'm bringing it personally. I will be with you. And I think kind of what you're experiencing now, I can't read too far into it. I'm not an expert on these things, but Karina, I'm hearing so much healing in the things you're saying, is that God himself has shown up in the midst of this journey Mm -hmm. on this road beyond the bolted door, and you're experiencing him not just the commodities that we sometimes want from him. Does that make sense? That all makes perfect sense. And if you think of that verse in Hosea about the valley of trouble, the door of hope wasn't just a door out of the valley. It says it was in the valley of trouble. I never really noticed that till I've been really researching that verse. Mm-hmm. In the valley of trouble was the door of hope. So... For me to find my healing, to find the hope and my purpose, I had to be exactly in this. This was my, this was my Satan meant it for evil, but God turned it to good. Life story. Amen and amen. Yeah, and by the way, it was Philippians four thirteen. So, um, but you know, but that's the point that God Himself gets personally involved in this healing process and walks with us on the road beyond the bolted door that Kareen Channel is talking about. She was raped as a child, uh, a preteen and a teenager, and experienced that trauma of sexual abuse. Obviously, most of this kind of stuff happens from people that are relatively close to us, whether they're related or uh, acquaintances or live in the neighborhood or something like that. And um, that's a hard pill to swallow because this isn't just some stranger that comes to abuse you. It's somebody who's trusted. It's somebody that, that should be trustworthy and and safe, uh, that that causes a level of trauma all by itself, let alone the actual uh, violation that occurs in the life of this little girl. And so um, just coming to grips with saying it happened, just telling the story is really what Beyond the Bolted Door is about. And everything else after that, the road beyond the bolted door describes the healing process that God is taking Kareen Channel through. So we're going to continue our conversation here in just a moment. I hope you'll stick around. Remember that you can get a copy of the book by going to Amazon. It's called Beyond, I'm sorry, The Road Beyond the Bolted Door is book number two. Beyond the Bolted Door is book number one. And Kareen Channel, C-H-A-A, I'm sorry, A-N-N-E-L-L is uh, our guest. We'll be back with more of NBL in just a moment. 
Today's program is brought to you by our friends at Firth Jewelers. Quality jewelry at affordable prices. That's Firth. All right, back at it here with Kareen Channel, author of The Road Beyond the Bolted Door. Uh, Kareen, you mentioned a number of chapter titles, but let's just talk about the process itself. Like, when did it dawn on you that there was more to come? I mean, you 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 hit send on the first book, and you felt this fear, like, oh, no, now I've told the story. i I got to believe in some ways you thought that was going to be the relief you were looking it, for. That was going to be the healing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Surprise. Exactly. <laughs> it wasn't. Surprise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So how did you how did you how did you come to discover that this was really just the beginning of the healing process? Through my writing, because my writing is um, the thing God has used to heal me. Like I've written lots of things that obviously people haven't read, mm-hmm. you know. And I blog for God TV, so a lot of times I've looked back over my blogs over the past four years and thought. Whoa, <laughs> there is a lot in between those lines. And I'm writing for me initially. And so I think after I started having these, like, panic attacks and anxiety attacks, I just did what I do that God gave me within me, the healing from within. And I just started writing how I felt. And the more I wrote and I would look at it and I would think, Oh, man, I need to tell somebody, oh, yeah, I need to tell her that, or, oh, I need to tell him about this. And that's how it happened. That's why I tell people when they go, oh, I could never write a book. I'm like, you probably already have. Go back and look at your Bible notes or your journal or letters or poems. We all have a story to tell, and it's inside of us all. And God means for us to tell our stories. They all matter, the good ones and the bad ones. Well, yeah, and they're evidence of his grace and his love exactly. and his mercy. And I, I really like how you put it before. I'll never be able to say it the exact same way, but that you, you came to understand that when you're writing these books, that they're really not for everybody. They're for the people that really no. need to hear them. And, and something about, yeah. I've said this many times, something about transparency begets transparency. Like when somebody gets honest, somebody gets real, somebody tells the raw truth about something, other people relax and begin to tell the truth about what they're going through. And mm-hmm. I have to believe that, you know, on the heels of your first book, people began approaching you or emailing you or whatever, getting in contact with you and saying, I can't believe what you've been through. Oh. I went through the same thing or I'm experiencing exactly. the same kind of stuff. Yep. Yep. I have experienced that. And I think through those emails, through those messages, people calling me, that started to build something up on the other side, the, like a confidence, like, okay, I'm glad I did that. Okay, this is good. I helped somebody. It's, it's really that simple. If you feel like you helped somebody, then it's a purpose. Like you bake a chocolate cake. Why would you bake a chocolate cake and just leave it on the table and you want somebody to eat it and tell you that it was good? It's that simple. Right. Um. James 5.16 says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for one another so that you may be healed. And, you know, that's an interesting verse because it deals with a sin issue. And I don't think that a little girl who was raped by someone she trusted has anything to do with your sin. But there certainly was an issue there that it created this sense of secrecy, like you felt, you know, that you weren't able to come clean about this or even talk about it for over 50 years, which is amazing since you're only 29 years old, Corrine. That's I know. Crazy. Isn't that great? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But, Don't tell anybody. <laughs> but, but because you've been open and transparent, you, you put that in the light, and God's able to use it, and God works in the light. Satan works in the darkness. You brought it to the exactly. light. And, and mm-hmm. you've no doubt connected then with others who've been through similar kinds of things. And I wonder if, if really the healing goes both ways. In other words, it isn't just that because you're the writer who has a book, that you're the one pr- offering all of the anecdotes and stories and, and you know, truths that, that you've mm-hmm. discovered and you're learning about. Therefore, you're the one who's providing all the healing to the people that need to hear it. But I think that sometimes when the people are reacting in certain ways to your story, you're also receiving continued healing. Am I correct? It's going oh, both ways. Okay. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. 
So the, it it helps me heal more when I hear, you know, that sure. it helps somebody else. Yeah, and people have had similar but different experiences, so they have their own set of you know experiences and information to bring to the table. In other words, they've right. walked a different road, but that you can learn some things through their own experience. So what a, what a blessing, honestly, that God gave you the ability to write, Kareem, because you're able to express your feelings, express the story of what happened to you, share a bit about what you're learning, and then get feedback from people who can further speak into your life. And everyone, benef- at least everyone who avails himself of that information, yeah. benefits. And what a beautiful picture that God is taking something that really most would consider to be ugly, brutal, harsh, and make something beautiful out of it. But isn't that the God we serve, right? Yes, yep. I wanted to say that I have what I call them a book team. And what happened with the first book is I I had an editor, which I'm pretty sure I couldn't have done it without her cheering me on. Mm -hmm. And then I would find a few trusted people, maybe people that I knew had been through something similar to my story, and I would have them review my book. So I have reviewers from both books. And we've become a team because they would read it and they would tell me their thoughts and it would help them open up about their stories. And then their stories would help me heal from my story. And it's been a beautiful thing that I didn't even expect, but it's like I built a fortress around myself. Mm -hmm. And so when I get anxious or I need to be cheered on or just reminded of why I'm doing this, I call them. And this has been a big deal for me because for decades I carried that secret burden by myself. You know, like, the, um, is it Pilgrim's Progress? Maybe when he carried all his burdens in the sack through the journey of life or something? Yes. I might have the wrong answer. No, it's Pilgrim's I think that, Progress, yes. Okay. But that was kind of, I view, my, I view myself like that. But I've learned that no one can help you if they don't know that you need help. I had a very good front. And my front was not even just being fake. It was just who I became. It was just the wall I put up, and this is what you get to see. And nobody asked to see anything else, so we were good. We'll just leave it. Again, so my husband died. And when he died, I think what happened really was, in essence, I went back to the day before we were married. Because he became like my pro- my protector, you know, my knight in shining armor, and we built this beautiful life. And so everything that happened before mm-hmm. age 20 just went to the side. And then he died, and it all came back. But again, God was very slow, obviously, you know, gracious, and it's a journey. All the way to the end, and it's not over. None of our stories are over till the fi- the finish line, you know? Right. Yeah, and how comforting to know that it is a journey because I, I, I know me and I know the mistakes and failures and obstacles I've faced in my own life. I'm sure anyone listening, being honest, would say the same thing, that we know that we're a long way from being perfected, but one day we will be. And what a beautiful day that's going to be. I, I want to ask you along those lines, Kareem, somebody might be listening with a skeptical eye or something and skeptical ear i guess if they're listening right but um yeah but they they might say well oh kareen's just another one of those people that really sort of likes being a victim like that that she has a victim mentality and and then you can write books you can get attention from being a victim you know you can probably even make money if you sell a lot of books and good lord do speaking <laughs> engagements okay but you know i'm, I'm in first corinthians chapter six there's a whole list of all kinds of sins that people commit and really not that important what they are. We're all sinners. We all fall short of God's glory. So fill in the blank, any sin you've ever committed. And then it says in verse 11 of 1 Corinthians 6, and that is what some of you were, but you were washed, Mm -hmm. you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So there's a, you know, there's a past, a present, and a future. The past is we were separated from God. In the present, we're being perfected, and one day we will be perfect (laughs) as we stand before him. So we're in process, right? And I, 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 I kind of think that, um, I do, here's the thing. I don't get the sense from you, Kareen, that you enjoy being a victim, that you're very much looking down the road to the day when you stand before Christ fully healed, delivered, signed, mm-hmm. sealed, delivered, whatever that looks like, right? But, yeah. but that you are rejoicing in the fact that you're in process, that you're not stuck 
that God is at work in your life and that that is part of the healing and the freedom that he's bringing. And that's why there'll actually be one more book. Here we go. I was going to ask. <laughs> you really just, thank you. You just already told what it's about. Really? Because oh, I, are you, no, okay, that's from the Lord then. That's from, totally from the Lord. I had no idea. My son said to me, Mom, I think you need it to be a trilogy. I'm like, oh, no, because whenever he says things, he's generally right. And I'm like, okay, why do you think that? He goes, I don't know. I just feel like there's more. <laughs> And that's for you to figure out. Thank you. So I thought about it. I thought book one is my story. You know, it's the story I didn't ask to be in. Think about it. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask to be there. Book two is my journey out of that story. Book three is the ending, and I get to write my own ending. And I thought of that from Hebrews 11, where it says those who have gone before us, you know, they were commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised, because God had promised something better for us, so that only together with us are they made perfect. And one of the quotes from my book, which will probably, I mean, it's going to be a quote from my third book, not this book. Let me see if I can find it. None of our stories are finished until... All of our stories are finished. All right, you're blowing my mind with these concepts you're tossing out at us today, Corrine. Oh. My brain hurts thinking about stuff like this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's good. It's good, but there's just but there's so true. much truth packed in what you're saying. Yeah. None of our stories are finished till all of our stories are finished. Right. You're correct. Yeah. And largely, and that yeah. is Abraham and Esther and Princess Tamar. Her story isn't finished until my story is finished, and on it goes. And the next book is going to be a generational thing. It's going to be the victory. We had the struggle, we had the journey, and then we're going to get the victory, because I'm going to hopefully show what God meant for the ending to look like, because nobody, we don't really talk about that. Well, then this is a perfect way to say that uh, Kareen Channel is going to be back with us again on NBL when we get a chance yes, to talk about <laughs> the road beyond the bolted door and... Um, I don't know if you've landed on a book title yet for book three, but we'll be back to hear. I have, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> okay. If you tell me, we'll have to edit it out or something. You know, I know how that goes. I'll be getting the frantic call from Corrine later tonight. So, uh, no, listen, yeah. it's a beautiful thing that God is doing in your life, in your heart. I'm so grateful that you, you're willing to share your story and be transparent because I know that you're encouraging others to do the same. Transparency begets transparency, and our stories are intertwined in the story of Jesus. We are his bride. Exactly. Think about that. We're the bride of Christ, right? I mean, right. he only has one bride, and we're all part of it. So, exactly. yeah, that, there's, there's some sermons in there. i I got to believe there's some pastors listening right now going, Sister Corrine, that stuff will preach, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be coming out <laughs> in sermons and oh. in pulpits in the days ahead. You wait and see. All right. Can I read? Do I have time to read you just a couple lines? This Please is what do. I wanted to end. Absolutely. I wanted to end with. Sure. Okay. This is just an excerpt from my book. Um, heal, just heal. Whatever that looks like for you, maybe you already know. Maybe you've been questioning the process or wondering what that even looks like. Healing comes with surrender, admission, truth, forgiveness, acceptance and a whole laundry list of painful things that hurt before they make us better. But when you have healed, then you can change the future. We must find healing. We don't need to be fixed or too fixed. We just need to heal. Wow. It's going to be a good one, and uh, we'll find out what the name of it is soon enough. But, Kareen, thank you for sharing your story. I just want to pray for you as you continue on your journey. And as we continue thank on our journey having. with you. Yeah. So, Lord, I, I just thank you for Corrine, for the work you're doing in her life and in her heart. I thank you for the vision and understanding you're giving her in the process of her own healing, which in many ways is all of our healing. Lord, we're, the, we're your bride, and there's only one bride of Christ. And for those of us who know and love you, we're it. God, you're transforming each one of us so that collectively we will look like Jesus and we'll be ready to stand before you face to face. That's going to be a, such a day of, of release and victory as uh, 
Corrine used that word. Lord, we're in process right now, but thank you that you haven't abandoned us, that you're leading us, you're guiding us, your presence is with us, and you never leave us, you never forsake us. Continue your healing work, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, so the book is available at Amazon. It's called The Road Beyond the Bolted Door. The first book was called Beyond the Bolted Door, so this is uh, the healing journey, The Road Beyond the Bolted Door from Corrine, C-O-R-I-N-E, Channel, C-H-A-N-N-E-L-L. But you can get it at Amazon, and we'll look forward to having you back again soon. Corrine, thank you for being with us. God bless you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.